Western civilization is on the brink of complete chaos and destruction, and over the past few years we have seen massive activist protests that include the toppling of statues, shutting down speaker events, climate activists vandalizing artwork in museums, blocking roads and one ways, they even glued themselves to the floor in the name of saving the planet. As much as those people want to send a positive message, their actions always seem to look more detrimental to the cause they claim to fight for. Many of them deliberately and publicly call for violence against those who disagree with them. This Children, who are the future of our society, are being exposed to this poison at an alarming rate, and everything that makes us at the core a rational thinking society and culture is being wiped out before our very eyes. But there's no hate in my heart at all, so that's You fine. are being hateful when you tell somebody that identifies okay. as a man that they're not a man. That's not that hateful. hateful, that's a fact. There's no space for civil debates or discussions in the public square as it were anymore. So I'd stay away from the genetics and back to the brain scans. You cut that out now, or you'll go home in an ambulance. Yeah, that seems mildly inappropriate for a political discussion. If you don't agree with them, then you are the enemy. Whether we agree or not, right? That has nothing to do with it. Let's talk about it. Let's let's debate. But within the framework of our current sociopolitical status, there's no room for debate, no space for discussion. But I've been shut out. You know, some some platforms will not have me on. You know, I tried to go on. I tried to go on the View. They didn't have me on the View. Why? Um, you know, I don't I don't follow their uh their brand of politics. I guess. And certainly no time to be talking tolerant of any idea that differs from the woke liberal hive mind. You can't without, give birth without being female. Without female reproductive you're, you're organs. A fe, you're a female person with a gender identity that is male. I'm a non-binary non person with a uterus That's, is what I am. Yes, I'm a non-binary yes, person with a uterus. I understand very what clear. you're saying. No, you I, don't. I, you I don't, don't understand. understand. You don't understand you're at all. And at you're all. saying that you're open to the conversation, but you're really not open because every time something comes yeah. up for you to open up to, you're blocking it. If you refuse to accept their narrative, then you're a bigot, a racist, deemed to be canceled and even killed. Here she is again, Hanoi Jane Hilton. Uh, first, she was for uh, our opponents in the Vietnam War. And now she believes, she suggests that it's okay to murder pro-life advocates. Hmm. She was on The View yesterday. Here's what Hanoi Jane said. Besides, besides marching and, and protesting, what else do you suggest? Well, well it doesn't it's happen murder. overnight. It's not a miraculous, <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> murder. <laughs> She's kidding. Wait a second. She's just now, kidding. Don't, she probably will get a Nobel Prize. But it's very, the truth. Very, very, very soon. It, it is the truth. But the concept of concrete and objective truth does not exist to these people. People. Why can't I identify as a black lesbian? <laughs> well, firstly, I mean, it was. Well, I'm serious. Her. I'm serious. If I can identify as anything mm -hmm. without any need to prove I'm actually what that is. I think taking it to a kind of absurd no, status. No, no. I think, where I think we're that's talking what. Talking about quite a with respect, I think that change. you'd already opened the absurdity door by saying it is limitless. You can do what you like. Anyone can say I'm a woman. So I simply ask you, why can't I? Because. We're more moved by and committed to uh, ideologies and narratives than we are to truth. And the one thing that a lying culture can't tolerate is the truth, right? Truth has become a right-wing concept. You cannot say it, because if you say it, you are considered right-wing. And to be right-wing is to be in league with the forces of evil. But now you're duty-bound by law, if you're a professional, to say, oh, you think you're a boy? Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely, 100%, you are. What can we do to facilitate that move forward? And that all got pushed into the law under the guise of the elimination of conversion therapy. I was being treated as if I were an adult with the mental faculties to be able to consent to all this and understand what I was consenting to. But I wasn't, I was just a kid. And the one thing that is fueling all of that nonsense is none other than wokeness. In the last five years in America and much of the West, we have witnessed a social revolution. This revolution is driven by the movement we call wokeness. One word sort of sums it up, and that is the word victim. Um, especially when you start talking about, you know, social justice movement, critical theory, um, you know, when, when you have um, as a foundational idea that uh, people who are appealing to absolute truth are part of, you know, this oppressive hegemonic power, 
uh, that's that's one problem. And I would venture to say that the second problem that this whole woke culture has is truth and its constant need to redefine it. And it's not easy to know what's going on around us because the media has always seemed to spin things that way by creating echo chambers with one-sided reporting that pushes a single narrative. That is why I use Ground News to do my research. Ground News is a news comparison platform where for every news story, I get a quick visual breakdown of the outlet covering the story along with their political bias, how factual the sources are and which entity owns the source because I want to know the motivating factor of a particular headline as well as compare headlines to see if the outlet is trying to manipulate its readers with different wording. Ground News also has a blind spot page for this because it shows articles that are being underreported or overreported by the left or the right. This helps me develop a sense to find common ground, appreciate different viewpoints and experiences and helps me balance out the information I'm exposed to in the media. This way I get a well-rounded worldview by looking at how the different sides are reporting on a story. I also end up spotting my own bias which is understandable because I usually get stuck on consuming the news that favors my perspective and values which I always want to rectify. If you're looking for a better way to stay informed about current events around the world, check out Ground News. Ground News is offering 30% off its vintage subscription. This discount is only available at ground.news slash the gospel or by clicking the link in the description. And I really want to thank Ground News for the sponsorship because it's really great to be supported by companies companies that have similar goals to the channel in spreading truth and also helping people to see the opposing perspective which is what the school culture is increasingly struggling to do and this is a real tragedy because there is a concerted effort to sacrifice truth and reality at the altar of diversity, equity and inclusion. Behind the scenes pictures from Disney's live action remake of Snow White were leaked this weekend and there appears to be a sizable problem. Where are the dwarfs? These are roles made for actors of my stature. I can't go out for the Harrison Ford or the George Clooney roles because that's not for me. Right. And now it's taken away. It, it, I don't feel that's right. Apparently the dwarf wolves is nowhere to be found in the new Disney Snow White action movie. Why? Because in the world of wokeness, feelings are much more important than truth. God forbids you hurt someone's feeling with the truth. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended. Because in order to be able to think, you have to risk being offensive. I mean, look at the conversation we're having right now. You know, like you're certainly willing to risk offending me in the pursuit of truth. Why should you have the right to do that? It's been rather uncomfortable. And that's not the only thing that's been raised in that woke Snow White. Snow White is not white. How ironic. And her talking points are, well, it's best I show you. You said you were bringing a modern edge to it on stage. What do you mean by that? I just mean that it's no longer 1937 and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is... She's not going to be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be and the leader that her late father told her that she could be if she was fearless, fair, brave and true. And so it's just a really incredible story for I think young people everywhere to see themselves in. Snow White is running for president. This is yet another classic animated movie to be destroyed by Disney. They came up with their own Snow White that has no dwarves in it and the princess will not be rescued by the prince because the prince is a symbol of this oppressive patriarchy. After all, who needs men, right? How much I hate men and why I hate men? You're all replaceable, don't ever get too comfortable and don't ever think otherwise. You're a guest in this household and you can be kicked out just as quickly as you were welcome. I am simple man. You are an idiot. And it looks like the princess is a woke feminist who's running for president. Snow White is running for president. <laughs> I'm launching my campaign. I am. But then when you also have this powerful narrative um, that men are unsafe, that, that the patriarchy is inherently oppressive, then that tends to override any evidence to the contrary. So you talk about these studies that point to outcomes for young men, that just doesn't carry as much weight as the passionate feminist who sees the patriarchy as the root of all evils. The self-perceived victims of social discrimination today are women who believe that they have been long abused by men, uh, not only personally but sort of collectively. Uh, there are the poor who believe that they have long been abused by the wealthy. There are the ethnic groups who believe that they have long been abused by other ethnic groups who have more power. And there are the sexually deviant, the homosexuals in particular, 
who have been abused uh, by heterosexuals. Men need to respect women, period. So you should respect women. Ha! <laughs> I am a woman, so f if you don't think Sir. so. And how dare you sit up here and try to say that women aren't worth respect. I didn't say that. I am a woman, I just became a woman. So you have these victim categories, women, certain ethnic groups, the poor, homosexuals, and then there is a growing group of, of, of victims who would just simply categorize themselves as those who have to endure hate speech. And hate speech in our society seems to be anything you don't agree with. Anybody who says something to you that you don't agree with, you, you find as hate speech. Or anybody who says something that you don't agree with has imposed upon you a microaggression. And they're acting aggressively on you because they they said something that, that you did not like, maybe a word, maybe a phrase, maybe an epithet, or maybe an idea, maybe a viewpoint. So we have a growing category of victims of all kinds of microaggressions. It is man a Manichaean division between ideologies of one kind or another and those who don't subscribe to those ideologies. And the ideologies brook no dissent because they represent, in the minds of people who promote them, they represent goodness, brotherhood of man, progress, reason, education. And anyone who opposes them is against all good things. So they are not just wrong, they're not people to be argued with. They're people to be removed and silenced because otherwise um, you're against all good things. So it's, it's that division between uh, good and evil. And unfortunately, you know, if you stand up against an ideology like, I don't know, um, so-called anti-racism, uh, which basically says all white people are bad. Critical theory. Uh, a critical theory, or you stand up and say a woman is defined by her biology, so you're against transgender. So, as you know, it's there's no discussion. You are cancelled. You are removed. You have to be silenced. This dissent cannot be permitted. But if you can't think for yourself, then you're not really free, are you? No, you're not. You're not. But I've been excluded I've been excluded on Oprah, you know. I, I, on Oprah? On Oprah, yeah, I've been excluded. You know the saying very well, go woke, go woke. And that's exactly what happened to major brand names and companies who decided to go woke earlier this year. After decades of domination, great American legacy brands like Bud Light, Ben & Jerry's and Target have taken a financial and reputational hit because they decided to hop on the woke bandwagon. The question is, will those companies ever recover and win back the loyal base customers? That's remained to be seen. You may be asking why these companies would hop on bandwagon of wokeness, knowing full well that they may lose their loyal customer base. Well, come to think of it, I don't think it's about money anymore. It's about pushing a new agenda, redefining morality, redefining reality. And speaking of redefining reality, the Hollywood machine will stop at nothing from pushing their woke narrative. Although proven to be detrimental by their box office numbers, they don't seem to care anymore. And the worst part about all of this is the fact that our society has become desensitized to it. It took years and years of brainwashing through movies, universities, and company programs to get us where we are today, at the bottom of the barrel of common sense and logic. So we're in what uh, a thinker of a previous age uh, called cultural totalitarianism. No alternative is to be permitted. Now, First of all, that is an assault on individual freedom, freedom of expression and freedom. But it's also a complete repudiation of reason. Because if you say there is nothing that you can say that can dissent from my ideology, and you say you're bringing evidence to oppose me, well, that cannot be the case. If you're denying evidence and reality and thinking and engagement, with an idea, then you're denying reason itself. And so the irony is that in an age of supposed reason, we're so rational that we've dispensed with religion. Only idiots have any kind of religious sense because it's not based on reason. That's the thinking. So we're so rational we've got rid of religion 
And yet, we are repudiating rationality completely. In the neo-Marxist ideology, religion in and of itself, there's no absolute truth, right? Religion is just the tool um, that enforces the hegemonic power, right? So these guys want to use this, you know, Freudian, you know, Keynesian ideology to basically say, here, here's the truth, here's the reality. It's the opposite of what you religious prudes have always said, but of course it would be because this is science and that's just science fiction, you know, that you call religion, um, when actually the opposite is true. Speaking of common sense, it looks like we are living in the age of unreason, an age in which your gender is undefined, truth is subjective, and morality is what makes you happy. This is something that doesn't quite add up. So I would say that we are in a new age of unreason. That's what we're in, an age of unreason. That's what we've unleashed. And it's an irony because we've done it under the aegis of being rational. Um, but in getting rid of religion, we have unleashed an age of unreason. I, I came today very willing and, and enthusiastic about answering questions about women's and gender sexuality studies, which is so what you wanted, I do. You wanted to answer questions about women's studies, and so shouldn't the, the first answer you should be able to provide is what exactly is a woman? Well, it's, it, for me, it's, it's actually a really simple answer, and that's a person who identifies as a woman. But what are they identifying as? I, as a woman. So, so what is that? As a woman. Who would have thought that we would not know what a woman is in the 21st century in the United States of America? But I digress. The last frontier in the midst of this chaos, one would think, would be the church. Well, think again. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads. Nothing will stop the woke alphabet mafia from usurping the authority of the Bible in order for them to define their own God, their own Jesus, and appoint their own woke priests. Strange one, fabulous one, fluid and ever becoming one, do not allow us to make our ideas of you into an idol. You are mother, father, and parent. You are sister, brother, and sibling. You are drag queen and trans man and gender fluid, incapable of limiting your vast expressions of beauty. In a church, in a pulpit, as a prayer, to what God do you think you're praying? The God in your mirror, no other God. As someone who has grown up in our church, as someone who is gay and goes to the least religious college in the U.S., my evangelism on campus has grown. We have brought people to Jesus because they said they have not heard this message before. And again, I want to just remind you that you have to train your children in the truth because they're going to be drowning in a sea of lies. They are, as it were, trying to redesign the very fabric of reality. Social justice warriors and critical race theory activists have nearly destroyed the evangelical church over the issue of race and systemic racism. To be woke is to wake up and see America not as a just public order, not as a place that has real sin in its past, grievous sin, but yet a country that has made real progress. No, to be woke is to say none of that has really happened. Actually, America is still systemically racist. And in fact, according to Kendi and others, the racism is worse because it's gone underground. It's gone quiet. And now normal people, including most normal white people, think that racism is really a problem we have overcome. And that is itself the sign that racism, systemic racism that is, is worse than ever. And woke feminism and LGBTQ agenda seem to be the spearhead of this whole thing. How woke is our society? Unreasonably and illogically woke. Trans male Anne Andrus has smashed the women's Canadian powerlifting record. The 40-year-old who identifies as a woman and apparently even mocked women now holds multiple records in the female division. 
This new record has sparked outrage as Pierce Morgan called it preposterous, while Riley Gaines, a former competitive swimmer, blamed the whole thing on the Canadian Prime Minister's policies. Oh, and if you were wondering, Ann Andrus had a total weight of lifts, 271 kilos, which was over 90 kilos from her closest opponent, Sue Jan Gill, who only finished with 175.5 kilos. A list of books, brands, movies, songs, ideas, products, people, and words deemed offensive grows ever longer. Those of us huddled together on the tiny island of common sense will be gradually submerged by the rising tide of lunacy until the two spirit penguins are in charge of the zoo. For this Pride Month, this universe asked us to describe ourselves in one word. The word I'm choosing is victory. Because as a little boy, I conquered all the things that came through my path. And look at me now, standing here as a strong, empowering, and confident trans woman. As I told you before, there's a concerted effort to redefine the very fabric of reality, and all of that in the name of diversity, equity, and inclusion. How did this happen, and how did this happen so quickly? Well, this is partly tied up with this issue of the college, so, so here's one way into it. So now, professionals are bound by law to offer gender-affirming advice. They're bound by law. Okay, so this is what this means. If you bring your 13-year-old in to be evaluated by a physician or a psychologist, who and maybe she has high levels of neuroticism, tilting towards depression and anxiety, and then that's making itself manifest in bodily discomfort, now that's being shaped by this cultural fad that insists that if you feel uncomfortable in your body, it's because you're of the opposite gender. That's the psychological epidemic part of it. And we can talk about that in a little bit more detail. But now you're duty bound by law, if you're a professional, to say, oh, you think you're a boy? Yeah, absolutely. You, absolutely, 100%, you are. What can we do to facilitate that move forward? And that all got, what would you call it? what pushed into the law under the guise of the elimination of conversion therapy. My name is Chloe Cole and I'm a detransitioner. Another way to put that would be, I used to believe that I was born the wrong body and the adults in my life whom I trusted affirmed my belief and this caused me lifelong irreversible harm. I speak to you today as a victim of one of the biggest medical scandals in the history of the United States of America. I speak to you in the hope that you will have the courage to bring the scandal to an end and ensure that other vulnerable teenagers, children and young adults don't go through what I went through. If you confuse people about a fundamental element of their identity, then those who are already so confused they're barely hanging on are going to fall prey to that and all hell's going to break loose. And that's exactly what's happened in the, you know, in the trans in the trans situation. Not only is woke culture destroying the West and crippling our society, it has claimed many lives, children, young adults and adults alike, all across the spectrum. People suffering from gender dysphoria have been given a death sentence. If you feel a certain way, then you must have been born in the wrong body. This could not be any further from the truth. Those lies aren't any different from the lie of the serpent in the garden, questioning the word, the design and purpose of God. And the lie that our society has developed will ultimately condemn millions. The question is, is there any hope for America? Is there a light at the end of this dark and terrible tunnel? The answer is yes, there is light, there is hope, but it's not in politics or some social reform movement. This hope is only in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Unless the West turns back to God, unless America turns back to God, there's nothing that will stop the strain of disaster. What you and I can do in the meantime is share the gospel, preach Christ in Him crucified, preach Jesus Christ who alone can deliver sinners from the bondage of sin and despair. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So to those who are working and straining and wrestling to earn the favor of God, be still and know that he is God. Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. To those of you who think that you're so wise that you don't need God, repent. 
Acknowledge the folly of your dependence on human wisdom and flee to Christ. To all under the sound of my voice, Christ is our only hope. Be found in Him and live. This is it for this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. If you'd like to have one of those t-shirts, subscribe to our Patreon. We are giving them out for free to all of our Patreon members as a token of our appreciation for your support and prayers. Make sure to follow us on Rumble because you never know when YouTube might take this channel down. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, with love in Christ, your brother John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.